So I will actually talk a little bit more about this technical, this technique that involves rabies virus that uh, Mike was already uh, alluding to in his presentation as a tool to trace connectivity um, of, of uh, neurons, of course, that can be in the cortex, but in, also in other areas. And I will focus mo mostly on the adult hippocampus that was, uh, and uh, adult neurogenesis that was nicely introduced, of course, by Alejandro uh, in his presentation. Then how do we move forward to this way? Yes. So I don't need to show you really this slide because we heard uh, quite a lot about the adult generated neurons, but I want to directly go to the approach and technique that we are interested in, namely tracing the connections of neurons onto newborn neurons using the rabies virus as a, a tool. And um, Gord was already referring to the pioneering work by Ed Calloway in collaboration with Klaus Konzelmann, who developed a rabies virus or modified the rabies virus such that it allows you that you can very specifically infect your primer, uh, primary uh, starter cell population of choice and then reveal all these cells that, or ideally reveal all these cells that monosynaptically impinge onto this new, uh, on, onto this um, start the cell population of your choice. And in our case, the interest is to uh, look particularly at newborn neurons in the adult hippocampus. So, what you can, the, the, the approach goes the following way. So you modify the viral genome of the rabies virus. So rabies virus is a classical tool to actually retrogradely um, trace uh, anatomical connections. And you can um, render this monosynaptic by um, removing the uh, protein G, uh, the, 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 the gene coding for G, which is a surface protein, and thereby making this vir virus dependent on transcomplementation with G. So only those cells that you transcomplement and you decide which cells should be transcomplemented with G, only these cells can pass uh, uh, viral particles to their presynaptic partners, but subsequent stages cannot um, be traced. So, and the other trick they uh, did was to pseudotype the rabies virus, so to remove the uh, glycoprotein G from the surface and replace it by another protein, which is called NA, and thereby rendering the virus dependent, uh, or the, the, the infectivity dependent on uh, expression of another protein, TVA, which is um, a avian protein, and NA is a, a avian ligand, and only if you express TVA um, ectopically, of course, and that's again your choice, and that allows you to define your uh, starter cell population, only then you get infection with the rabies virus. So this is shown in the next slide how it works. Let's see how this, no, it doesn't, okay, yes. Assume this is a newborn neuron that has been or is going to be infected by a retroviral. So we use retroviral vectors that only can transduce stably um, dividing progenitor cells and thereby we can introduce uh, what I, I told you, the uh, receptor TVA which renders this cell specifically permissive to infection by subsequent uh, transduction with the rabies virus. At the same time, we supply the glycoprotein G, so only this cell is capable of producing viral, uh, viable viral vectors or particles. So now we come in the next step, so and a reported gene, of course. Now we come with a rabies virus that can only infect this cell, and that rabies virus also brings in its um, reporter. You see the cell now uh, becomes double-labeled, and from this cell now, given that it has now the um, glycoprotein G, you, this cell can produce uh, viral particles that can replicate and uh, because of the transcomplementation can spread to the subsequent. But th these presynaptic partners can no longer uh, transfer the virus to this second order presynaptic neurons and thereby the, 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 the system is monosynaptically restricted. So in our case, we, were, we are interested in, the, in studying the connectivity of adult-born neurons in the hippocampus. And 
the concept essentially, or the, uh, the way that we want to use it is by, um, by this approach to, to uh, trace connections, for example, from the enteral cortex, but also the local connectivity, and see how this is affected by different uh, paradigms of, for example, experience, um, such as, for example, like when mice are exposed to an enriched environment, and you will see this in a moment. So, this just shows you the viral uh, vectors that we used for this uh, experiment. So, we had a set of retroviruses that, uh, in one single retrovirus, we bring in the reported gene, G, and TVA. And we have control retroviruses, and this shows you the rabies virus construct. There are different strains of rabies viruses. We used here this set, um, red, set strain of uh, rabies virus. This shows you. This, uh, in this hippocampus, we did a stereotactical injection of, the re of a control retrovirus that does not introduce TVA, and then infected with the rabies virus, and you see there was no infection. So this is showing that it works very nicely. So if you don't have TVA receptor, this uh, rabies virus absolutely does not infect a cell. Now, um, actually I have to go here. This is uh, showing you, in contrast, when you transduce um, the cells with a, ra a retrovirus, that brings in uh, the TVA receptor and G, you do get many um, double-labeled cells indicating these are the prime, the, the, the starter cell population, um, newborn neurons that were infected then subsequently by the rabies virus. And also you can already see here some uh, presynaptic, presumably presynaptic partners, local interneurons that are located in the hilus. As a, since this is a bit more technical, I show you a, uh, a slide where we Actually, uh, address the question to which extent does the rabies virus infection compromise the functionality of the neurons? And at least in a, in a, in a shorter time window, we see that the, the rabies virus does not um, affect the function. So you can, in a, in, a, in a certain time window, and I think this time window shouldn't exceed a week after rabies virus injection, these cells still have functional properties that are identical to those cells that have not received the rabies virus. But after a certain period, uh, there's a toxicity to be observed, and one has to, of course, then to work in the, in the appropriate time window. So this just shows you we can also label then um, long distance, long, uh, long range connections, for example, those uh, arising from the internal cortex to the dented charles. And this is um, something that um, is quite, quite useful. So I just show you an example how we can use this approach, and then I show you an example of how this approach can be modified and uh, actually fit into the topic of this um, workshop, be used actually to also address functional, um, functional property or functional processing in the cortex. And the latter part, which I mentioned, is just referring to a very recent study from Otto Roscoe's lab. But first I will show you some data from our own uh, work, which uh, started from the original finding from Rusty Gage lab and, and Gerd Keppermann did this work that when you expose mice to an enriched environment, this um, env environmental enrichment results in an increase in other neurogenesis in the dented charos. We actually addressed the question whether this is not just an increase in, in um, neurogenesis, but actually reflects a increase in connectivity of newborn neurons. And as neurons integrate, that would then ultimately result in their enhanced uh, survival, for example. So to really use this method, however, uh, while tracing for addressing questions regarding activity-dependent processes ultimately, we would like, of course, to know whether the virus processing, so the biosynthesis, the, tr uh, the transfer to um, presynaptic partners itself is activity-dependent. If that's the case, then this method wouldn't be very useful so we would have to, we, we had first to check whether essentially the, 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 the basic process of viral transfer is, is the same in conditions where activity is raised or suppressed. And what we did here was in a set of in vitro studies that showed that in fact, whatever uh, pharmacological manipulation we did, we did not see an, a, a, uh, observe a major, and this should be also coming up in the quantification, a major difference in viral, in viral transfer, showing that either when we checked at two days or at five days, 
any of these treatments that would either increase or decrease activity, there was a similar amount of cells labeled. Um, and thus the method uh, looks like that uh, you can actually re reliably use to address questions um, of how connectivity changes um, under different paradigms of experience. So the paradigm that we, we used was uh, environmental enrichment compared to standard housing. And so this is experiments, and I will show you a picture of him later, um, done by uh, Matteo Bergami, who uh, quite ingeniously tr uh, designed the experiment the following way. So he first um, injected, as I told you, the newborn neurons with a retrovirus, allowed them to mature, and then injected the rabies virus that then would transfer viral particles to their, pre to their presynaptic partners. Then he um, made essentially the following exp um, experiment. He addressed the question whether en environmental enrichment placed at different time points with respect to the birth of the new newborn neurons would affect the overall integration of these cells. So he asked the question whether if you start putting the mice in an en en enriched environment, just before the newborn neuron was born. So this is all done in adult animals, but the time point zero marks here the time point where we inject the retroviruses, which you can use as a surrogate for the birth dating of the neuron. So he started either one week before, two weeks after the birth, or even nine weeks after the birth. And then address the question, does this environmental enrichment affect the way the neurons get hooked up in the network? So compare these two uh, pictures, you see there's no big difference if you expose mice um, or a, a neuron in a certain way for four weeks starting at minus one and extending to three weeks after its birth. Likewise, when you start very late at nine weeks and you extend exposure to 13 weeks, again there's no major difference. However, there's a remarkable difference when you start at two weeks and expose until six weeks after the birth of a newborn neuron. So that indicates that there's a critical time window during which these newborn neurons are, or during which the connectivity is, can be highly influenced by uh, experience. And this shows you just that you can then characterize in this system which cells are actually traced. So he found that there you can label different local interneuron populations. Um, uh, you see this here in the quantification that Again, this is only in this sensitive time window that you get a quantitative change. And you can also look, for example, here, maybe this is easy to appreciate, the uh, difference in the axonal arborization within the um, granular cell layer that is affected by the, um, by the paradigm only, again, during this critical window. What is also interesting by this technique, you can essentially reveal connections that had not been found before, so non-canonical connections onto newborn neurons. For example, certain interneuron populations in the CA subfields apparently project onto newborn neurons, um, while you don't see them no normally in a, um, yeah, under control conditions. And also what uh, we found was that also the long-range connections arising from the entorhinal cortex are, um, are increased when you expose mice in, within this critical window. I, for time reasons now, I, d I will not go into the, into the detail of this, but many of the connections, they are not stable if you put the mice back to the uh, impoverished environment, but uh, the connections from the entorhinal, co uh, entorhinal cortex remain stable even, even after return to the um, control housing, and this is shown here also in the quantification. So even if you put the mice back then, under control condition, they actually reach the same level as in an enriched environment, and also running can increase these connections. So this shows that there are diff uh, different um, connections, or the connections can be differently affected, differentially affected by experience, and there's a critical time window during which this is particularly prominent. Maybe for a technical point, it's also very important to see that these changes in connectivity can be corroborated by other methods. And one approach that Matteo chose was to show that 
In fact, environmental enrichment, the increased connectivity we observe after environmental enrichment is also reflected in an increase in the density of mushroom spines, which would indicate indeed there are more connections and not just more cells labeled, which could have other potential reasons for, for being the case. And this is shown here in the quantification, also showing that again, these changes are stable upon return to a um, basic uh, control housing. And this is summarized here in, in actually a nice uh, preview by, by uh, Gu Li and, and Hong Jin, where they uh, show that, or where they actually make a nice table that we can now uh, use in the future, as showing that uh, exactly that there's a differential effect of different uh, conditions like environmental enrichment running on local populations, while long range connections, for example, are equally affected by both conditions. Didn't go into much detail with the running, but I wanted actually only to illustrate that this method can be used um, as a technique to trace connectivity, but also see how connections are remodeled. And I think this is uh, maybe the most important take home message from, from our own study here. And I just want to, um, this is a very recent study, and I have to say this is of course something that it, uh, you can of course just, um, you are not stuck with the, with the boring GFP that only can reveal um, anatomical connections, but you can also move a, st a step ahead and it replaced the chief P by, um, for example, genetic calcium indicators. And this is work that has been recently published from the Bolton Roska lab. And so they took a little bit a different approach, but I think it's a very elegant study and showing uh, again the power of the system. So in this case, what they did, they electroporated, instead of using a retrovirus, they electroporated um, single starter cells, uh, pyramidal neurons in the, in, the, in the cerebral cortex with those vectors that are necessary for transcomplementation of the, of, the, of the viral genome, as well as um, defining the starter cell population. And then infected locally with the rabies virus, allowing them to transfer from this single primary cell, um, uh, the, the transfer of the virus to the presynaptic partners. And then this is a very nice um, illustration actually how you can over time see how the connections um, are revealed. So this is not that the connections are formed in this time, but you see that at an early time point you don't see the connections and at later time points you see those connections um, uh, visualized. So this means that this of course the, the, the time dependence of the viral spread. And when you do then um, confocal microscopy with, after staining, you see this is very nicely, um, you see very nicely how this actually, um, one, one single cell is locally connected. But what I think was really impressive in the study, they could of course then use um, two photon imaging and, and use this uh, calcium indicator for uh, studying the um, responses to visual stimulation, and I just will show you the, uh, this, this nice uh, graphical description of the um, responses of the starter cell and its presynaptic partners. And this, in this case, it is one s uh, single starter cell that receives input from these different um, presynaptic partners, and all the cells in the same color, that means green, are cells that have similar um, response properties as the starter cell, while the other cells that have different colors have different response properties, for example, with respect to motion di direction. So this indicates that you can use this tool now to try to address the question, what are the presynaptic networks that impinge on a given cell, and how do these uh, match to the response properties or the, the, the yeah, the, the, the role of these cells in, in the information processing. Okay, so this is just um, acknowledging the key characters that uh, played a role in, in, in our study, namely Aditi, Des Aditi Despandi, who is now doing a postdoc at UCSF, and, sorry, and Matteo Bergami, who recently got his own group at the CISAD in Cologne, and uh, important collaborators were and are Magdalena Götz and Klaus Konzelmann. And for our experience-dependent study, we also had the gracious collaboration of Alejandro. <laughs>
and I thank you for your attention.